wo bin ich heute? Ganz herzlich willkommen zu unserer Reise-Quiz-Show. Mein Name ist Thomas und in diesem Video schauen wir uns eine Postkarte an und versuchen herauszufinden, woher sie kommt. Heute haben wir eine Postkarte von Oliveira. Also Oliveira, erzähl uns, wo bist du gerade? Hi Thomas. Oh Mann, ich glaube, ich habe echt mein Lieblingsland gefunden. Hier kann man schöne Strände, schneebedeckte Berge, Vulkane und sogar Regenwald finden. Außerdem sind die Geschichte und die Kultur dieses Inselstaates super interessant und viele Tiere gibt es nur hier zu sehen. Gestern sind wir mit der Fähre von der Südinsel in die Hauptstadt auf der Nordinsel gefahren. Der Name der Stadt kommt übrigens von dem gleichen Briten, der Gummistiefel berühmt machte. Also, weißt du, wo ich heute bin? Bis bald, Oliveira. Oh, I'm very curious now if Oliveira says she has found her favorite country. Let's have a more detailed look at the postcard, translate it sentence by sentence and also pick out any interesting German constructions or any new vocabulary. Oh Mann, ich glaube, ich habe echt mein Lieblingsland gefunden. The expression right at the start, oh Mann, oh man, can be used in a positive way like, oh Mann, das ist super. Oh wow, this is great. That can also be used in a more negative way when he's like, oh man, es regnet schon wieder. Oh dear, it's raining again. In this sentence, it's definitely positive because Oliveira then says, I believe I truly, echt, have found my favorite country. So she's using the perfect tense, habe gefunden. And she also uses the word echt, which we just heard translated as truly or really just to emphasize her statement. The last bit I want to point out is Lieblingsland and I am sure you have come across the construction Liebling with something like Lieblingsmusik, Lieblingshobby, Lieblingsessen. This time it's just used with country, so the favorite country, Lieblingsland. And worth remembering that it's one word in German. Okay, let's have a look at the second sentence. Hier kann man schöne Strände, schneebedeckte Berge Vulkane und sogar Regenwald finden. The subject in the sentence man, which you have probably come across before as well, can be translated with one or you. So here one can, and if we look at the end of the sentence, we have finden, our second verb that goes with the modal verb, you can. Here one can find schöne Strände, beautiful beaches, schneebedeckte Berge, Snow-covered mountains, Vulkane, Volcanoes und sogar and even Regenwald, Rainforest. So that's definitely quite a variety of landscapes to find in one country and it probably rules out quite a good number of locations within Europe. Oliveira then tells us, außerdem sind die Geschichte und die Kultur dieses Inselstaates super interessant. Und viele Tiere gibt es nur hier zu sehen. Außerdem can be best translated with moreover or furthermore. So furthermore, the history and the culture of this insular state or this island state are super interesting. And a lot of animals can only be seen here. Some again useful information, but let's quickly look at the German. And the first part of the sentence, I think the construction is really straightforward. We have sind super interessant. We are starting with außerdem, so the verb comes next. And then die Geschichte und die Kultur are our subject in the sentence. But then we have dieses Inselstaates. So it's actually a genitive of this. And then you probably noticed that I struggled with a good translation for this. In German, it's a compound noun, so it's Insel and Staat. 
island and state. So as I translated it before, it's the idea of a state made up of different islands. This construction of like a landscape and the word state can also be used with other landscapes. So quite often you will hear the word Alpenstaat or Alpenstaaten when you are talking about the Alpine countries. So Switzerland, Italy, France, Austria or Germany. Quite often it's Alpenstaaten is used as a collective term for all these states. But just like here it can also be used in the singular. For example, der Alpenstaat Österreich. Now in the second part, there's a construction that is not so super common. It appeared, I think, in one or two other videos so far, but in a slightly different way. And that is the combination of gibt es and the infinitive plus zu. If we look at the whole sentence, we had viele Tiere gibt es nur hier zu sehen. It might be easy if we change the order of those words and say es gibt viele Tiere nur hier zu sehen. Then we have our normal construction with es gibt. There are then a lot of animals in the accusative only here to be seen. This whole construction could be easily replaced with a modal verb just like in the sentence before where we had hier kann man finden. You could say und man kann viele Tiere nur hier sehen. I would say the later is a more common and more often seen construction But there's definitely a couple of cases where you will come across the es gibt with the infinitive. For example, in the sentence, es gibt hier nichts zu sehen. There is nothing to be seen here, which you might hear by German police, for example, when they're turning people away from a crime scene or an accident. Good. We talked about the language. Let's quickly talk about the information for our secret location. We now know that the country we are currently looking for is made up of more than one island and that it has some unique wildlife that you will find nowhere else in the world. I think I might have a slight idea, but there's two more sentences. So let's get some more information. Gestern sind wir mit der Fähre von der Südinsel in die Hauptstadt auf der Nordinsel gefahren. Gestern, yesterday and Then we have sind, and if we look at the end of the sentence, we see our past participle, gefahren. So yesterday we drove with a ferry from the Südinsel, the South Island, to the capital on the North Island. Yesterday we took the ferry from the South Island to the capital on the North Island. A very good sentence to quickly look at some cases. So mit der Fähre, mit always taking the dative. And it's normally die Fähre, therefore changes to der Fähre. Von also always takes the dative, so it's normally die Insel or die Südinsel. So again, changes from die to der in the dative. And then in die Hauptstadt, this time we are talking about the location. We are not in the capital yet, we are moving towards the capital. So the accusative case is used here. Again, it's a feminine word, die Stadt, but in the accusative, die just stays die. And then our last case, auf der Nordinsel. This time we're talking about the location because we're saying where that capital is located. And therefore we're using the dative. So similar again, die Nordinsel changes to der Nordinsel. So a very good summary in the sentence of different reasons for different cases. First, we have two prepositions that always demand the dative, mit und von. Then we're talking about the location that we're moving towards to using the accusative and then about the location where something is already located. It is already there and we're using the dative. Aha, so I think we're looking for the capital of this Inselstaat, of this state of islands. Our last clue from Oliveira is Der Name der Stadt kommt übrigens von dem gleichen Briten, der Gummistiefel berühmt machte. Wow, this is some uh, unexpected and complex information here. So, the name der Stadt, the name of the city, using the genitive here for die Stadt, changing to der Stadt. And then we have kommen, which normally means to come. But this time it's used with a preposition. So, kommt übrigens, by the way, von. And this can be translated very literal as comes from. But the meaning here is different. It's not from a location. It's more originates from, derives from something. And in our case, it's from the same Brit. So, der Brite is a British person. And then we have some additional information in a relative clause. 
der Gummistiefel berühmt machte. Der is referring back to the Brit, the British person. And in English you would translate it here with who. So, who made Gummistiefel famous? Now you might have noticed that I didn't translate the word Gummistiefel and that's because I wanted to give you a couple of extra seconds to figure out what city Oliveira is writing to us from today. The translation of Gummistiefel will be provided in a couple of seconds, but let's quickly summarize and have a look at the very last sentence. So far, we know that the country Oliveira is in today is made up of islands. We later find out there's something called a South Island and a North Island. We know there's a great variety of landscapes and some unique animal life. And that the final destination we are looking for is the capital of that country. In our very last sentence, Oliveira says, Also, weißt du, wo ich heute bin? So, do you know where I am today? Also, es ist Zeit für eine Antwort. It's time for an answer. And this time, the answer will not only give us the location of Oliveira today, it will also will provide us with a translation for the German word Gummistiefel. And that is... Wellington. Correct. So Wellington means Gummistiefel in German, but it is also the title of a very famous British general for, if I'm not 100% mistaken, defeated Napoleon and then was named Duke of Wellington. This person also made the Wellington boots very famous, so they are named after him. And apparently he was also the inspiration for the name of the capital of New Zealand, Wellington, which is located in the very south of the northern island and therefore is also the point where you normally take the ferry if you want to go from one island to the other. Okay, good. I think that was probably enough additional information at the end here. Thank you very much, Oliveira, for this very, very awesome postcard. I really enjoyed it. There was a lot of really nice and hopefully also new vocabulary in this postcard and some really interesting German sentence constructions. And an absolutely fantastic last clue showing us how things are related and connected to each other in our world. Vielen Dank fürs Zuhören. I really hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Und hoffentlich bis zum nächsten Mal. Mein Name ist Thomas. Tschüss.